Alright, so my garden starts are nice and big now. Um, so I am going to go ahead and transplant these. Oh, this is what they look like outside of the pot. And um, so I'm going to separate each individual one out like that. And I'm careful to like keep an eye on them for pests. And you're trying to pull, you're not trying to pull the top of the plant apart, you're trying to pull the roots apart. And try and get, it's good to loosen this up a little first and then try and get as many roots as possible when you separate them out. You can, tomatoes are pretty forgiving, tomatillos are too, um, other things are a little bit more picky. Um, and then once you have that out, I'll sometimes just go ahead and remove the cotyledons just because they have a tendency to be a little bit more pest prone. Um, if they're already, you know, pretty well developed. And you're going to put tomatoes at least, you know, you're going to plant them pretty deep because each one of these, see here, each one of these little hairs on the stem is going to turn into a root. Um, and you can do that with tomatoes and tomatillos. I also have Let's see, peppers and amaranth and basil over there, and those you can't do that with, so you'll have to be real conscientious of how deep you plant them. And then just make sure that you label your container. So I'm putting BC on these because these are black cherry tomatoes. And you do that on every pot. and. It has happened many times for me as, I well, as, as well as for other people I know where you think that you're going to remember or you're going to keep them separate from one another or whatever else and it just never works out. You always end up with a few tomatoes that you have no idea what they are. Um, so it's best to just go ahead and put the time into making sure everyone is individually labeled. <laughs> So if you are only going to grow, you know, if you only need to grow like a dozen tomato plants or fewer, <laughs> um, you really, it probably would be beneficial for you to just go ahead and do this where each, you know, each tomato grows in its individual pot. You don't do the group planting. Um, and then you can skip a transplanting step. And that's a good idea um, since this does make it so the plants go through a certain amount of shock. Um, from the transplant, you can skip that. And, uh, you know, it also makes them, I've had issues where they've been, you know, they send out pheromones that attract pests when they are going through this sort of shock as well. Um, and that's not great either. You can lose your starts that way too. Um, I am still using um, specifically a seedling mix uh, that we make and we will be selling at the gardener's market this spring. And then when I'm done with all of these guys, I am going to bottom, bottom water them um, with some, some Super Thrive water with a little bit of Super Thrive in it. Because um, the vitamins in Super Thrive are really good for helping reduce the amount of shock that plants go through. Um, and then also giving them a little bit of a nutrient boost. I also try and keep them... You know, if you're doing this where there, there is the option of them being in direct sunlight, you know, maybe plan on doing it later in the day and then uh, put them somewhere where it's less bright and hot right after you transplant them. Kind of let them have a little bit of a recovery period and, you know, overnight, like a, a few hours out of the sun or overnight is, is enough for that. Um, some people, when they transplant these out into their gardens, they'll go ahead and they'll do the same thing, you know. Um, if they, especially if they aren't hardened off, they'll need a little bit of extra protection. But because our sun is so intense, some folks will go ahead and, uh, you know, cover them with a one-gallon pot or something for a day after they transplant them, just to give them the opportunity to recover a little bit from the shock of being transplanted before they... Um, are exposed to the elements uh, 
all the way. Another really great way of avoiding mixing up your tomato plants, and this is something that I'm going to start doing also because we don't do a lot of garden starts, is just grow one variety. Um, you know, once you figure out what varieties you really like, or what variety you really like, just you know, grow one variety a year, and another great benefit of that is that you can collect seed and save your own seed um, because you don't have to worry too much about cross pollination. Um, you know, if your neighbor's growing tomatoes and they're a different variety, it's really unlikely that they're going to get cross pollinated. Of course, you know, if you're going to sell the seed, you probably want to be isolate them better than that but I think it's like a even if they're right next to each other I think it's like a four percent chance or something like that that you're gonna end up with cross-pollination so if you're talking about somebody else's yard it's not that big of a deal um, worst case scenario you'll develop your own tomato variety on accident which you know can work out great and really wait until your plants are pretty good size before you transplant them. There have been many occasions where I have, you know, rushed um, transplanting things and they didn't do very well. Uh, where I waited other times because of either patience or um, not having the time to transplant and they just did a lot better. So don't rush your plants too much, um, especially with like tomatoes and uh, tomatoes and tomatillos. You know they they're super forgiving on transplanting. Um, people will even do cuttings from tomatoes, um, so that kind of gives you an idea whoop, of. Uh, how forgiving they'll be. You can even cut their roots off and you can still grow a plant from them without too much trouble. So, um, give them time. And I always, you know, I, for a long time, I would always transplant. So like, in with this bunch, I've got a lot of these nice ones and then I also have some that ended up kind of spindly. And these ones I go ahead and toss. And for a long time I didn't do that. Um, and then I would just keep those ones for myself in my garden. But I really found over time <laughs> that that's not good gardening practice. And I, it's, it's hard because I feel like a eugenicist when I do that. But I have to remember that plants are not people. And that you really do need to start out with the best plants that you possibly can. So... Don't feel guilty about, you know, tossing out plants that don't look quite as good as other ones and not waiting too long for certain seeds to germinate because 90% of the time, if they don't germinate at the same, times, same time as the first ones, the healthiest group of them germinating, then there's probably going to be something wrong with them. Um, you know, they're just not going to be as vigorous as the ones that really got going right away. At least when you're talking about um, when you're talking about cultivated varieties. It's also really important to remember so once you're at this stage where you're transplanting so they should you know you should have at least two true leaves um, on them. You're gonna need to start adding some airflow like some good like a little fan or something, or a big fan that's in your in your house that's giving your plants a decent amount of um, movement, um, or else you're gonna end up. So these guys, see how these guys are kind of they're just kind of floppy. Their stems aren't real strong. Um, you can start it earlier when they're really small, um, but once you transplant, because they're big enough to go ahead and move into larger pots, you need to make sure that they have uh, a decent amount of air movement going across the plants or else you're just gonna the first time you transplant them outside they're just gonna lay down on the ground and uh, hopefully not give up but they might um, it's just really important it's also important to have that airflow to reduce um, diseases and decrease the likelihood of pests 
um, just because it'll be a lot healthier to have good airflow, just just like with people or anything else. Um, so that's a that's a happy pepper plant. It's got a second second set of true leaves and it's ready to ready to transplant. Um, and remember, you're not transplanting these guys like you transplant the tomatoes. You're just doing it to the same level you did the others. <laughs> it's the same level. Sorry. <clears throat> you're just transplanting them to the level that they were in the soil before. So when you're trying to figure out where to fill the soil to, you can kind of tell with most plants um, there's going to be like a color change. So roots are usually white and then there's like a transition zone. In this case it's kind of purple and then it's green. So usually you just want the soil to be somewhere in that purple zone. Um, and it'll, it'll vary somewhat depending on the plant. So this is what they look like same day. Some of them are still a little floppy and that is okay. They get pretty floppy sometimes right after you transplant them. Um, if they don't recover from that within a day or two, then they might not have survived. But otherwise, they should be fine. Got my heating mat, got my light, good to go.